Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today we're going to be talking about B vitamins and why they are so important for your energy. All right, before we dive in, put your comments down below. Let me know your thoughts. Smash that like button, thumbs up, and hit that bell so you get notifications of great content coming your way. So B vitamins, they really play in a very important role in generating energy in the mitochondria. So you have B1, which is going to be thymine, B2, which is riboflavin, B3 is niacin, B5 is pentothenic acid, B6 is a pyridoxal 5-phosphate. Then you have like, I think it's B7 is like a biotin. And then you have B9, which essentially is folate. And then you have B12, which is going to be your, your methylated B12 or hydroxyl or adenosyl B12. Those are your big B vitamins. Now, B vitamins are going to be very high in, in animal products, uh, meat. They're going to be high in nutritional yeast. They'll be high in seafood. They'll also be high in some of your, your green vegetables. So really important, whole foods are going to be the way to get a lot of your B vitamins, especially B12. You're not going to get that quite in plant products as much. Now, very important, when you consume lots of carbohydrate and refined sugar, you're going to burn through a lot of your B vitamins, right? So lots of sugar, when they, when glucose and such gets you know burnt metabolically, it's going to cause you to burn up a lot of B vitamins and a lot of magnesium. So lots of refined processed carbohydrates, sugar, and alcohol will cause you to deplete a lot of your B vitamins, right? A lot of people that have Irish descent... Um, they tend to be prone to alcoholism. Why? Because you deplete a lot of B vitamins when you drink alcohol. And if you're already functionally kind of predisposed to be low in certain B vitamins, that can trigger and drive more alcohol addiction by depleting a lot of your B vitamins. So B vitamins, very, very important. So obviously a good multivitamin or a good B vitamin complex is going to have a combination of those. Where you see a lot of crappy supplements is you see a lot of folic acid, which doesn't get converted well in 30 to 70% of the population. And you see B vitamins that aren't methylated. So whether it's a methyl B12 or adenosyl or hydroxyl B12, those are pretty good B12s because they're going to be pretty activated for your body to be able to utilize. Now, you're going to make a lot of B vitamins internally with good healthy gut bacteria. So when you have dysbiosis, you're not going to produce a lot of B vitamins in your gut. So healthy gut produces good healthy B vitamins. When you have a lot of dysbiosis or SIBO, you're going to not have that, that input of good nutrition, endogenous nutritional um, production. When you have poor hydrochloric acid production and or gut inflammation, you may not make what's called intrinsic factor to bind to and absorb your B12. So B12 is one of these kind of, I call it, it's like a relay race. So you have the first baton is handed off in the gut when you have B12 bind to intrinsic factor. And the second baton is now handed off in the uh, ileum at the end of the small intestine. And if we have gut inflammation, the parietal cells are affected in that in that uh, stomach area. They make hydrochloric acid. So they also make intrinsic factor and may not make that first baton to be able to ke- to be able to toss it off to the intrinsic factor and then it may not be able to toss the baton off to the ileum. So B12 is one of those ones that can be really affected by inflammation and if you're not breaking down your protein and your animal products, you may not get enough of it. So we have our B1, 2, 3, 5, 6, really good B vitamins. B12 is going to be the harder one. B the folate or B9 is going to be consumed primarily through animal and plant-based products, right? Green vegetables. And we talked about the reason why these B vitamins are so important, energy production. Uh, we need B12 to make and uh, mature our red blood cells, right? If we don't have enough B12, we can develop what's called a megaloblastic anemia or pernicious anemia. This is where your B vitamins or your uh, red blood cells are really big. So red blood cells, they, they start off big and they actually get smaller as they get old, right? We know kids, kids are small and get bigger. Red blood cells actually are bigger and get smaller. And when red blood cells are too big, it's because of lack of B vitamins. And when they're too small, it's because of lack of iron. So iron and B vitamins are also really important for red blood cell production. So B vitamins are really important internally to the gut. We need them for healthy um, metabolism, energy production. If we consume too much carbohydrates and processed grains and alcohol, we're going to deplete our B vitamins. We need healthy gut bacteria to be able to make B vitamins. We need good, healthy stomach function to be able to absorb B12 in our intestines. A good whole food diet is going to be the solution for that. And of course, if we have gut inflammation, we may not be able to break down and absorb a lot of those you know, fibers that are going to have the B12, you know, the plants that are going to have the B vitamins in there or the animal products. We're going to need good enzymatic function and good hydrochloric acid function to be able to break those nutrients down and to be able to absorb it. Um, Outside of that, we talked about supplementation a little bit, what you want to look for. We want to look for L-MTHFR, L-tetrahydromethylfolate. 
So activated folate's really important, or calcium folinate's a good form of folate. Uh, either methyl, hydroxyl, or adenosyl B12 are great options. And then regarding you know B6, pyridoxal 5-phosphate's great, or pyridoxine hydrochloride, all those are going to be really great. And just go with a really good supplement company just so you know you're going to get high quality. Uh, it's really important. And then a good natural form of B vitamins would be like nutritional yeast. That's a pretty good option on the natural source of B vitamins. So first thing is with B vitamins, whole food diet. Get really good whole foods, vegetables, seafood, meats, good digestion. Uh, number two, don't consume too much sugar and processed carbohydrate. That's what will burn it all. Number three, if you have dysbiosis and bacterial overgrowth, fix that because you're actually going to make B vitamins internally with good, healthy gut bacteria. And I would say number four, just make sure you're able to digest and break down your foods. Those are probably my, my big four to five steps in regards to you know, healthy B vitamins. And then just manage your stress. So healthy adrenals are going to be important because if you're really stressed, if you have that fight or flight nervous system response going, that's going to cause you to burn up a lot of B vitamins. The more stressed you are, the more you'll deplete your B vitamins. So just keep that in the back of your head by maybe taking in some adaptogens and supporting your adrenals and good healthy lifestyle habits with hydration and sleep will also help with your B vitamins, not necessarily on the input side, but more on the output side on how you burn them. So hope you guys are enjoying today's content. B vitamins play a big role with the adrenals, especially B5 and B6. B6 is really important with your neurotransmitters. You need B6 to be able to synthesize serotonin, which helps with mood. Serotonin also gets converted to melatonin, which helps with sleep. And B6 also can help with uh, dopamine and adrenaline function, which these are all mood and focus and cognitive neurotransmitters. And then, of course, um, thyroid is very important, too, because we need a lot of those nutrients to help with thyroid function. So keep that in mind. So when you have B vitamin issues, it can also affect the adrenals, can also affect your neurotransmitters and thyroid, too. So if you guys enjoy this content, click down below. You can schedule a consult with myself or my staff worldwide. We are here to help you guys if you have underlying issues where you want to get to the root cause. Also, let's go dive into some of your questions. Let me see how I can help. What is up? All right, so off the bat here, how do I feed my energy storehouse, which is the mitochondria, if HV, gut issues? Okay, so if I've got issues. So first thing is, really good diet. So good proteins, good fatty acids, you know, more carbohydrates from, from you know, vegetables than fruit and starch. It's a pretty good rule of thumb. You can always tweak that if you're more active, right? That's fine, you can do more starch if that's the case. And then number two is gonna be, you can add in just a good high quality multi and B vitamin support on top of that. Your mitochondria is gonna need B vitamins, needs CoQ10, needs carnitine. It's gonna need um, things like alpha lipoic acid. It can use things like creatine or ribose. These are all really important energizing nutrients. And again, you'll get some in, in your diet and then you can always fill in the gaps nutritionally. Now, I'll look at a patient's organic acid test Marker 7 through 14 on there are very helpful. Succinate, malate, fumarate, uh, cisaconitate, citrate. These are all good organic acid markers. When these markers go really high, that tells me you're burning up a lot of B vitamins. You're burning up a lot of ALA. You're burning up a lot of CoQ10. If we see like suberate, it means you're burning up a lot of carnitine, right? If we see things like xanthiurinate, burning up a lot of B6, right? Isocaproate, right? B vitamins. So a lot of these markers on an organic acid test can tell us how our B vitamins are doing metabolically. So it's nice to look at them. So we figure out what the stress is to cool down the stress, support the adrenals so we're not in a sympathetic fight or flight burning our B vitamins. And we'll take some supplements. So taking supplements is fine as long as we're fixing the root cause. If we're not fixing the root cause, you just have to know it's a Band-Aid. And as long as you're okay with it, it's fine. Some patients are like, hey, I'm, I Right now, my diet's going to be crappy, but if I take my B vitamins, I'm going to feel a little bit better. Fine, just know, you know, I always kind of say, what's the big picture? The big picture is diet, digestion, good lifestyle, and then you can add supplements down the road. But if you're not, just know you're burning the candle at both ends. Okay, let me keep rolling with you guys. How do I cure my digestion issues, gas, bloating? So six hours, like we always talk to, I refer to like broad questions back to podcasts because I can't answer it in 30 seconds. So... First R, remove bad food. Second R, replace enzymes, acids. Third R, repair the gut lining and hormones. Fourth R, remove infections. Fifth R, populate good bacteria. Six R, retest. But go to my website. We have a new search feature up there. So when you search, it should be pretty nice. 
Dr. J, every time I see pee, every time I see, pee, I see bubbles in my urine. What does that mean? It could be protein issues. Uh, it's hard to say. Make sure you're hydrated enough too to make sure there's not some kind of a dehydration issue. That's the, the first thing. Um, you could always do a urinalysis to make sure there's nothing wrong. Uh, more than likely, you're fine, but I would just make sure you're hydrated enough. That's the first thing. What are your favorite herbs and spices? I mean, I would just say sea salt's great um, as my favorite kind of herb or spice. More of a spice, I guess you could say, but sea salt's wonderful. Um, dill is great. Uh, love ginger. Uh, love basil. Those, um, if you want to consider like, um, what's the kind of mushroom? Truffle mushrooms I use kind of as a, a seasoning. They taste awesome. Uh, kidney lemons are good for checking protein. Okay, I'm not sure what that means. Let's see here. How do I cure my microbiome flora and heal my gut from gas? I already answered that question already. Great question. The 5R protocol is what you're looking for. Yeah, I do 6. The 6R is really important. That's the retest because some people have another infection and, and we don't get it retested on, on the 6R. So 6R is kind of what I've uh, amalgamated over the years. I'm also dealing with liver and kidney problems, adrenals on top of this. So yeah, support your adrenals foundationally, right? You're going to support your kidneys naturally by keeping your glucose and your insulin and carbs down, by um, keep having good, healthy, organic proteins and fats, and by digesting your food. That's the easiest thing. Now, you can also do things like cordyceps, which is really good, or astragalus. Um, these are all really good for the kidneys as well. Is sauerkraut better with food on an empty stomach? It's a probiotic, so you could always do it on an empty stomach. That's fine. I mean, probiotics taken with food can also aid in digestion, so I'm fine with you trying it both ways and see how you do. Any non-dairy, non-beef protein powders you recommend for your clients? Um, so you could do pea protein. I have one called True Pea. True pea protein is wonderful. I mean, it's just the protein, so there's no anti-nutrients or lectins or phytates in there, so it's pretty clean. It's a pretty complete amino acid, so I like that. And then outside of that, I mean, collagen which is, I guess it's, it's from a beef source, but it's in a peptide form. So there should be like no like beef residue, so to speak. It's gonna be all in peptide form, so it's very broken down. So if you're sensitive to beef, you may be able to get away with that. Great, excellent. Uh, any ideas what might be the root cause of sun sensitivity to skin and eyes? Skin hives, eye inflammation. So the first thing with sun sensitivity is... Um, Adrenals, like photophobia stuff, like just being sun sensitive, especially with your eyes, a lot of times is adrenals. Now, regarding sensitivity to the skin is you can make sure you have good essential fatty acids on board, right? So good fatty acids help bring nutrients to the skin. You could add in things like grapeseed extract these are, or things like OPCs, oligomeric proanthocyanidins. These are like powerful, good antioxidants, but your fat-soluble vitamins are going to be very helpful at bringing a lot of the nutrients to the skin, vitamin A as well. And then just make sure if, if you're developing like hives and things like that, there's some kind of histamine issue. So you may want to look at autoimmune template and probably cutting a lot of the histamines out of your diet and making sure there's no like allergens going up your nose or your sinuses. So I would really look at my nasal flush video for more help on internal support. Any protein powders for autoimmune and paleo patients? Pea protein, um, will work um, on an autoimmune. That's okay. That's fine because it's not peas. It's just the protein. And then a collagen would be another great option. So pea protein and collagen would be great. Very good. Very good. Let me see if I have any questions on here. MTHFR is also a big deal. Yeah. So MTHFR, I just assume everyone has MTHFR. So 30 to 70% of the population may have MTHFR where they, where they have a significant inhibition of being able to metabolize folate and especially B12. So how you get around this is you just get lots of activated folate through leafy green vegetables and through a lot of your high quality seafood and meats. Now, once you do that, you're pretty much going to be good. Now we can do what's called an organic acid test and look for a marker called FIGLU, 4-aminoglutamate. If we see that's high, we may work on giving extra LMTHF folate, extra activated folate supplementally and maybe extra B12. Now for B12, we look for methylmalonic acid for B12. So we can look at organic acid. So I always tell my patients, if they think they have an MTHFR issue, a lot do, it may not be a problem. So get your diet really good, test those organic acids and see how they're doing. If they're really high, high isn't good. We may come in there and actually support that better. So that's kind of how I look at that. 
get your diet good and see what happens next. Yep, so if you have hives, hives are histamine intolerance for sure. All right, guys, if you enjoyed today's content, click down below, really appreciate it, thumbs up, and shoot me over a review, and then screenshot it for me, justinhealth.com slash iTunes, do a review for me, give it a screenshot, email it, and we'll do a video next time with that topic. Appreciate it, guys. All right, you guys have an awesome day. Also, regarding hydration, don't hydrate with food. A couple ounces is okay for swallowing pills. If you're sipping on a slow glass of wine, fine, but you shouldn't be trying to hydrate with food. At least 10 minutes before or at least an hour and a half, two hours after is a pretty good way of doing it. And then how do I feel about hair mineral testing? I don't love it because if you have crappy digestion, the minerals and the nutrients you're eating won't make it to your hair effectively. So because hair is such a downstream marker, I like upstream markers such as digestion and intercellular nutrients better. Great questions, y'all. All right, you guys have an awesome day. Take care. Bye.